Tor Morita was capable of defending himself, but he never went that far. A former karate champion in junior high school, he was bullied relentlessly. For years, his classmates were his tormentors. At the football club, sometimes he was grabbed by the neck, pushed to the ground and dragged around. But my son's a quiet boy. He's not the kind of boy who'd react and defend himself when challenged. If he had retaliated at the time, he wouldn't have been a victim of the violence that followed. To this day, that makes him think a lot. When he was 13, Towa stopped going to school. He retreated from society, but the bullying continued online. He even attempted suicide. On the day we met his mother, Towa went out to avoid speaking to us. Towa suffers from post-traumatic stress disorder and is still staying away from school. Instead, he confines himself to this tiny room. The school did nothing to help at the time of the bullying incidents. Shiho Morita is still angry with the education system and decided to take action by forming a group to prevent other children from going through the same trauma as her son. Shiho acts as a mediator between parents and their child's school. She's currently dealing with about 20 bullying cases in Saitama, a prefecture near Tokyo. Here, as in other countries, Online messaging and social media have helped fuel bullying over the last decade or so. Blows, insults and humiliation, all freely available on Japanese social networking sites. School children in Tokyo say it's difficult to fight back once a herd mentality has kicked in. School students in Japan tend to act in groups. I think this could happen in our school. A minor event can take big proportions if it's shared online. I've heard about a bullying case at my school. It happened via social networking sites and online messaging. It's a type of violence that's less obvious. These situations often escape the attention of school authorities, with tragic consequences. In 2020, a record 499 school children committed suicide in Japan. This academic has created an online questionnaire in an attempt to address the problem. Distributed with the help of staff at around 50 schools, it allows victims to identify themselves in complete confidence. In Japan, school is primarily a place for evaluating, judging and grading students. That means children feel reluctant to talk to their teachers about their weaknesses or open up about their true feelings. There is, though, one place at school where students seem able to speak more openly, the nurse's office. At this high school, every student who visits the office must complete the online questionnaire. The nurse has been using it for two years and is pleased with the results. Once an injured student came here and, thanks to the questionnaire, it became clear that he'd been cutting himself and he'd had suicidal thoughts. With this system, we've been able to increase the ring of protection around the students. The number of bullying cases has officially tripled in Japan over the past 10 years, partly because more cases are being reported by victims. Some link this to a 2013 law requiring schools to take action against bullying. The law has led to greater awareness at schools. The number of reported bullying cases has increased because now adults are more aware that they have to act as quickly as possible. There's room for optimism despite the surge in reported cases. But experts agree that, in a country with a cultural resistance to speaking out, Japan has a long way to go before solving its ijime problem.